Jupiter. Within the solar system, in terms of dimensions and mass, Jupiter is in second place after the Sun. The planet, which takes its Latin name from the most important Roman deity, is about 2.5 times the mass of the other seven planets in the solar system and has a large family of moons around it. When we look outward from the Sun, Jupiter is the fifth planet whose distance from the Sun is approximately five times the distance from Earth to the Sun. The planet orbits the Sun in an elliptical orbit, with its closest and farthest points from its 76.1 million kilometers apart. In less than 12 years, Jupiter completes one orbit around the Sun. Like all other planets, Jupiter orbits the Sun, and Jupiter completes a round trip in less than 10 hours. This rapid rotation causes the planet's equator to be pushed outward, resulting in the planet being 6.5% wider than the polar region in the equator. Jupiter's axis of rotation is only one-third of an angle to the vertical line, so there is no news of seasons in Jupiter. Electric currents in the inner layers of metallic hydrogen in Jupiter create the planet's magnetic field. This magnetic field creates a giant bubble around the planet called the magnetosphere. The boundaries of this magnetic field extend far into space and the orbit of Saturn. Jupiter comprises hydrogen, helium, and a few other elements. These materials are in the form of gas in the planet's atmosphere, but their physical state changes under the planet's atmosphere. Methane and other hydrogen compounds create colors in the upper atmosphere. Jupiter's atmosphere comprises 89.5% hydrogen, 10.1% helium, and 0.3% methane and other compounds. Jupiter is more than 11 times the size of Earth, and Jupiter's mass is about 318 times that of Earth, but its density is very low. Jupiter's core alone is 25 times the mass of Earth. You will need 1,300 planets of the Earth to fill Jupiter with them. As pressure, temperature, and density increase at the lower depths of Jupiter, Jupiter's materials gradually change from gaseous to liquid. The inner layer of the planet is similar to molten metal. The planet's core is made of rock, metal, and hydrogen compounds, its inner layer is made of liquid metal hydrogen, its outer layer is made of liquid hydrogen and helium, and the planet's atmosphere is made of hydrogen and helium. To date, Eight very important spacecraft have studied Jupiter. Six have passed by the planet, but two spacecraft are in orbit around the planet. The first spacecraft to reach Jupiter were the Pioneer 10 and 11, which arrived in 1973 and 1974, respectively. The Voyagers studied the family system of Jupiter more closely than the Pioneers and discovered volcanoes on the Io moon. The Galileo spacecraft arrived on Jupiter in December 1995 after a six-year journey. Galileo was the first spacecraft to enter orbit around Jupiter, making the first long observations of Jupiter. Galileo remained in Jupiter's orbit during his mission, passing several of its moons several times and sending a module into the planet's atmosphere. A total of 16 Galileo scientific instruments examined Jupiter, its magnetic field, and its moons. One of the most remarkable achievements of this mission was that we learned of the existence of oceans of liquid water beneath the surface of the Europa moon. By the time the spacecraft completed its mission in 2003, about 14,000 images had been transmitted to Earth. In addition, the Cassini spacecraft passed Jupiter on its way to Saturn on the last day of 2000. The New Horizons spacecraft also passed Jupiter en route to meet Pluto in February 2007. 
Juno has been on Jupiter since 2016 and will continue to operate on that planet until 2025. Great Red Spot When Jupiter's rapid rotation around itself, its internal temperature, and the heat it receives from the Sun combine with the planet's atmospheric winds, they create turbulent areas in its upper atmosphere. These areas host large storms that create an oval, cloud-like appearance on the face of Jupiter. Some of these storms are short-lived, but others last for decades. The largest and most durable storm on Jupiter is the Great Red Spot. This giant hurricane, about twice the size of planet Earth, is the largest known hurricane in the solar system. This storm has been going on in Jupiter for more than 300 years. The red spot has changed its appearance, size, and color in the last 300 years. The red color in the center of the storm is created by materials emanating from the deeper regions of the atmosphere and then changing their nature when exposed to ultraviolet light from the sun. The large red spot is a high-pressure area. This spot rotates around itself every six days in a counterclockwise direction. In the outer regions of the storm, wind speeds reach about 434 km per hour. Still, in the center of the storm, there is a calm environment where the wind moves at a speed of only 16 km per hour. The central area of the storm is much higher than the side areas, and the height of clouds in this area and the adjacent regions may vary up to 30 kilometers. Ground-based observations made in 2010 show that the center of the storm is several degrees warmer than the rest and is rotating clockwise. Jupiter Moons With at least 79 moons, Jupiter is the largest moon family in the solar system. At least two-thirds of these moons have been discovered since January 2000. Most of these moons are named after the descendants and lovers of the god Jupiter in Roman mythology. The largest moon of Jupiter, called Ganymede, is the largest moon in the solar system. The orbits of Jupiter's nearest moons are in the region of the rings, and the distance of the farthest moon from Jupiter is 74 times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Most of these moons are small objects that orbit the planet over long distances. But Jupiter's four moons formed simultaneously as Jupiter and are located near the planet are actually large worlds. These four moons are called the four Galilean moons. Jupiter's four largest moons are in ascending order of distance from the planet, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. The four moons, known as the Galileans, are named after the prominent Italian scientist Galileo Galilei, who first observed them in January 1610 from Padua, Italy. Although he may not have been the first to see them, he is largely credited with discovering the moons because he published his observations and drew the attention of the scientific community and the public to the moons. For small moons orbit the planet in the rings of Jupiter and are closer to Jupiter than the four Galilean moons. These moons are known as Jupiter's inner moons. These four moons are Metis, Adrastia, Amalthea, and Phoebe. Beyond the orbit of Callisto, many other moons orbit Jupiter. The closest is the Misto, for times the distance from Jupiter to Callisto, and the farthest is the S-2003J2, which is 15 times farther away. All of these moons, except for seven of the innermost moons, orbit Jupiter in a clockwise direction, and it takes between 1.5 and 2.5 years for these moons to complete one orbit around Jupiter. The outer moons are small, and 35 moons are less than 5 kilometers in diameter and have an irregular appearance. 
Their dimensions, size, and round-the-clock rotation indicate they were originally asteroids. Galileo meets the Galileans. The four Galilean moons of Jupiter were the first moons in the solar system to be discovered after the moon. We have been monitoring them for 400 years, and the first look at them was when two Voyager spacecraft passed by in 1979. But for the first time with the Galileo spacecraft, scientists could study these moons closely and in detail. The spacecraft's four scientific instruments, including a camera, provided information on the type, texture, and size of Jupiter's moons and their temperature. The data recorded as Galileo passed by the moons was sent to Earth by a backup antenna. When Galileo finished work, with little fuel left for the spacecraft, the spacecraft headed toward Jupiter to prevent a possible collision with Europa and possible contamination of its subsurface oceans. Io Io is the third largest moon of Jupiter and the most active volcanic point in our solar system. This colorful moon is a world formed by volcanic craters and pores, streams of molten material, and eruptions that are thrown to high altitudes. Evo is slightly larger than Earth's moon and orbits Jupiter every 42 hours and 30 minutes. Jupiter's strong gravity affects the Io and creates two protrusions on the Io's surface. On the other hand, the friction created by the curvature of the Io's sphere causes the subsurface to heat up. These are the molten materials that protrude from the thin silicate crust and erupt on the surface of the Io. More than 100 mountainous and peak-like massifs and rugged plains have been identified on the Io's surface. The name of these roughnesses is related to the story of Io, who is one of the mistresses of Jupiter in Roman mythology. The volcanic nature of Io was discovered in 1979 by Voyager 1. Almost two decades later, Galileo's more detailed and complete studies showed that large areas of the Io's surface had been re-affected by volcanic activity since Voyager's visit and that the moon's surface had been recovered with molten material. More than 400 volcanic craters have been identified on Io, whose molten material is molten silicate rock combined with sulfur and sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide after heating, is ejected through the moon's surface fissures and cools rapidly, turning into a cool gas stream and frozen grains. These gases return to the surface after cooling, creating circular or oval surface ruggednesses. Europa The moon of Europa, which is only slightly smaller than the moon, is the fourth largest moon of Jupiter. Europa orbits Jupiter every 3.5 days and orbits itself at the same time. The outermost surface layer of Europa is an icy crust, but beneath the ice is an ocean of liquid water that covers the entire Europa. The moon's constituents are divided into an icy layer and an iron core in the deeper layers. Europa's icy crust reflects sunlight well, making it one of the brightest objects in our solar system. Europa also has one of the flattest surfaces in the solar system, and its ruggedness is only a few hundred meters high and low. These surface roughnesses can be divided into giant ice sheets, turbulent terrain, and linear structures. These roughnesses are named after Celtic myths or somehow related to Europa's character. Europa was a girl who Jupiter deceived. Europa's surface crust is estimated to be only about 50 million years old. Very few impact craters can be seen on it, indicating that its lifespan is relatively short and its surface is young.
The craters formed on the Europa over a longer period have disappeared due to the constant regeneration that takes place on the crust. Large areas of Europa's crust have been broken, and large blocks of ice have been displaced and relocated to new areas. The amount of liquid water in Europa's oceans is twice the amount of water in all of Earth's oceans. This water heats up due to the heat of the lower parts of the surface of the Moon and becomes a liquid. As Europa revolves around Jupiter, Jupiter pushes Europa in different directions. These pressures create friction and heat within Europa, which keeps the Moon's oceans hydrated. These oceans are one of the main interests of astronomers. Because it may be a suitable environment for a kind of microbial life also found in the Earth's oceans. Recent research shows that these oceans have enough oxygen storage to support such life. Ganymede Ganymede is a huge ice sheet of water and rock, which is the largest moon in the solar system. Ganymede takes its name from a young boy who, in Greek mythology, was the butler of the gods. Deep on the moon, there is an iron core surrounded by rocks. On top of this rock, a layer is soft, warm ice that turns into oceans of liquid water in the outermost regions, and on top are crusts of floating ice. The necessary heat to maintain the liquid state of water at a depth of 150 to 200 kilometers below the surface of the Ganymede is provided by internal radioactive rocks. The surface of this moon is composed of distinct dark and light areas and surfaces, and dark areas are slightly older than light areas. The dark areas contain grooves and openings that appear to result from erosion, possibly due to geological pressures. This happened before the asteroids hit the surface of the moon. Some older craters look different from other impact craters. These craters, known as palimpsests, are flattened and covered with clear ice. Brighter and younger areas often intersect the darker parts. These areas also contain parallel grooves and fissures that formed when the moon experienced tectonic tensions in its infancy. Parts of such landscapes are called sulcus and are named after places associated with ancient mythological characters. The longest of these grooves is a groove that is 5,066 kilometers long. Callisto Callisto takes its name from a Greek and Roman myth that Jupiter deceived. It is the outermost and second largest moon of Jupiter's Galilean moons. This moon, made of rock and ice, is about the size of Mercury. The surface of Callisto, unlike other Jupiter Galilean moons, has not been strangely altered by the activity and displacement of tectonic slippery or volcanic activity. But the surface of this moon contains a large number of impact craters. Craters formed when asteroids hit the moon's surface in the early days of its history, leaving scars on its face. The largest is a multi-ring crater called Valhalla, 3,000 kilometers in diameter. Valhalla is one of the largest impact craters in the solar system. Like the other surface openings of Callisto, the name of this opening is derived from mythology. Valhalla was a huge corridor where the throne of Odin, the Norse god, was located. Measurements made by the Galileo spacecraft suggest that there are subsurface layers of liquid water in Callisto.